Hi, I'm Ed Scar, and recently I made a heavy weapons team using some Victoria miniatures parts to fit in with my Tanith first and only army. And so naturally everyone was suddenly very excited that I should probably try out these, the Victoria miniatures Ranger torso with camo cloak. And I will, but not today, because I found something on Victoria miniatures website that seems to go unnoticed more often than not because this is the Spargan Officer Sprue female from Victoria Miniatures and this is somewhat interesting so let's have a closer look. So this is the Sprue and I've already popped a few parts off for a closer look. The first and most important part of course is the torso with the cloak and I recognize this part immediately as being identical to the Svargan sniper model from Victoria Miniatures. Identical cloak and details on the chest, even the medals. This one just comes as a multi-part option. Also comparing to the flak armor torsos, it's the same size as the female ones, but we have an officer's tunic instead of the flak armor, which is kind of obvious because they're called flak armor and officer. The sprue contains a single head, which unfortunately in my case had an air bubble in the neck. Thankfully it lines up with the collar of the torso quite well regardless and so there's no ill effect here. The hair has some Princess Leia vibe going on, nice ornate plait, but I would say that the nose is slightly off. Be it an accurate representation of a broken nose or a miscast caused by the air bubble, I don't know, it's not really a big deal and I can't paint faces very well in the first place. We also have this holstered pistol, which is a nice part, but it's the only part I didn't use. It's in my Bix box safe and sound and I'll use it sometime. Finally we have the arm options. There's a auto gun or bolt gun looking thing held in a slack, hugged against the shoulder position. The rifle here even has a recess in the barrel, so no drilling required. Intended to be paired with the rifle is a raised hand, signalling to a squad or giving a high five, I guess. Little bit of a mold line around the fingers, so some care should be taken when cleaning up this one. The other pair of arms has a chain sword in an odd pose. Given the shoulder armour, this weapon is pointed downwards rather than raised as you might expect. Looking at the images on Victoria Miniatures, she's actually resting this on the ground. Now I'm certain that a cut at the wrist and rotating it forwards would make for a very interesting pose, actually very similar to Gaunt himself, uh, but I used it unmodified in this case. And finally we have the pistol arm, pointed out in an old-timey straight arm shooting stance. I didn't like this quite as much, so I did modify it slightly, and you can see here that there is a second air bubble at the end of the arm. This wouldn't be an issue if you were gluing it together normally, as this is just extra space for glue to hold on to. And in my case, it actually made it easier to cut cleanly through this. What the sprue lacks, therefore, is legs. I do have a spare set of female legs kneeling, the same I used on Cena and Arilla which did cause me some problems with the separate cloak piece I used there, overshooting the model into the ground because they were kneeling. The officer's cloak, however, is a little shorter, so even when kneeling, the cloak is clear of the ground and looks pretty good. So overall, the sprue is quite useful for a Tanith model maker like myself. However, the quality of this sprue isn't as perfect as the other parts that I got with them. The flak armor torso and kneeling legs are so perfectly molded that even the mold lines are nearly invisible. The officer's sprue, however, does have a little bit of cleaning to do. It's hardly a big negative, nearly every molding requires some cleanup. And it's more that the other parts are excellent and this part is normal. So as there's one torso and one head but two sets of arms, and I have plenty of legs and torsos along with this, I will actually be making two models today using all of the parts from the sprue except for the holstered pistol. There's not much exciting to tell here. I washed the parts, cleaned the mold lines, and glued them together. I put the chainsaw arm at a little more of a forward angle than intended, due to the kneeling legs the intended pose wouldn't work. And as I mentioned, I shaved a little off of the armpit of the pistol arm so that it would point more forward than sideways. 
The rifle and open hand set of arms went on unmodified, and I found a wood elf head in my bits box that I felt might work, so I tried that for size. Finally, no ghost is complete without straight silver. Again, from Victoria Miniatures. Difficult to place on kneeling legs, but there it is. My officer built and ready to paint. Whilst I would usually say that this is the same paint scheme as all of my previous ghosts, there are some subtle changes here. And highlighting on the black clothes is the first change. Rather than simply adding a big smooth grey highlight, I'm being a little harsher with them. It's the whole more contrast thing. Looking directly at some of the other Gaunt's Ghost painters, I've tried to pick out the technical aspects of why mine look worse. What are the differences and how can I improve my paint style? Not simply copying their work, but taking technical inspiration to go off on my own scheme. And as I paint the second model, you can see that I've even done a dusty zenithal highlight. Not because I think it's useful or anything, I just ran out of grey. The time spent painting does give me a brief respite to talk about those legs. I had the idea to make this model when I was perusing Victoria Miniatures for Tanith options. One of the biggest advantages of Victoria Minis is they make some excellent female options, so I really wanted to pick some of those to represent the female ghosts. But to get a complete officer model, I would need an extra set of legs. As mentioned, the sprue has no legs. The female flak armored torsos come in a pack of five, and the female standing legs also come in a pack of five. The kneeling legs, however, come as a pack of six, which would give me one extra for the officer. But that means all of the ladies in my army are kneeling, and that's a little weird. The heavy weapons team and the one signaling looks good kneeling, but all of the others? Well, the kneeling legs pack is actually three sprues of two sets of legs each. I wish I'd have known that previously, as I would have bought the standing legs as a pack of five, two sets of the officer sprue, and then very politely asked for a single kneeling sprue, which would have gone to Cena and Arilla. The second big change in my painting style is the camouflage pattern, which I had laid down in my very earliest Tanith video. Originally a simple stripy pattern with highlights on the stripes. Now I'm trying two variants of quite a different concept. With the Autogun Trooper, I'm using my sharpest brush to create areas of spots with each of the same colors that I had been using previously. Instead of a big ugly stripe, I'm hoping that the spotty shape will hide the edges like real camouflage tries to do. For the officer, I used a different brush and stippled on some similar patches of dots. And with the models complete, I can show you a comparison of these techniques. Stripey, stipply, and dotty. I'm already working on the next step of the camouflage pattern, which essentially combines my old style with my new style. So there we go, another couple of models completed. Some more female officers for my Tanith first and only. And maybe this could be Major Petruskivskaya, pronunciation aside, or Tona Creed, uh, Captain. But I want to just mention two quick things before I round off. I'll say that the weapons that they're using are not exactly Munitorum approved last weapons. However, the Tanner First and Only are fairly well known for using battlefield pickups, civilian weapons and other things picked up in um, questionable locations. But if you did want to convert these over to um, glass weapons, the pistol would be fairly easy. You could cut that at the top of the hand or even at the wrist, switch it out for the um, Imperial Guard Sergeant's Arms. The rifle is a little bit more difficult to do. Again, I think cutting at the wrist would probably be the best option for that. But for me, I'm actually not going to run this second one as an officer. As I mentioned, the Tanith do tend to use a lot of pickup weapons, and this could quite happily be an auto gun or some other uh, hard slug weapon that is equivalent to a last gun. And so I'll probably run this one as a trooper. The second thing that I want to mention is the pricing, and I think the pricing is quite reasonable. I did some grimdark mathematics, 
uh, some accountancy almost, and I worked out that the officer sprue plus one set of legs, the kind of one sixth of the pack of six, uh, cost me in the order of about three pounds fifty. To add on the parts to make a second one, it came to about six pounds. Um, although I did use a different head, so it's probably about the same price uh, just using the, the extra set of arms. But I think that's all that really needs to be said. Do post in the comments if you uh, want to mention the slight change to the painting style of the cloak particularly, or anything else to do with these two models. And pop past the description on your way. There are many links in there to the other things I get up to, including a donation link that might keep me uh, buying some interesting things to put on the channel. But for now, I'm Ed Scar, always will be, and thank you very much for watching.